Hey guys, this is your tutorial for Monday, April 19th. Um, for our reminders for today, we talked about doing our graphing stations. That's what we did in class. I'm going to walk you guys through a little bit of it and then you're going to finish um, it on your own. Keep working on your force and motion vocab. It's going to be due on Thursday the 22nd. Okay, you got to get that done. And because vocabs due on Thursday, that also means that you're going to have a forces in motion quiz on Thursday the 22nd. Okay, so make sure you are preparing for that. Under the classwork tab in Google Classroom, you're going to find your copy of these stations. Um, the first couple of stations I'm going to do with you. And then it has a section that says your turn. So you're going to do those graphs on your own. So I'm going to go ahead and get out my copy while you guys get out yours. It looks like this. It says, let's practice. And it's got a graph. This graph on the front actually might help you a lot doing this activity because it shows you what each line segment means. Okay, so if you have a really um, line or a really diagonal line that shoots straight up, that's a constant speed, but it's very fast. So it's like a high rate of constant speed. If you have it more at a lower slope, then it's still a steady speed, but at a, a lower rate. Um, if you have a line that kind of curves and goes up and speeds up, it's getting faster and accelerating. But if your line starts up here and then gets horizontal, that means the object's slowing down. And if the object is plateaued and you see a horizontal line like right here, it means it's stationary and not moving. But this is specifically for a position or distance time graph, not for a speed time graph. So make sure you pay attention to what's on your X and Y axis. So the First graphing station, let's go ahead and look at the name of our graph, let's look at our units, and let's look at what's on the X and Y. So it tells us it's a distance versus time graph. Our time is in seconds on the X, and our distance is in meters on the Y. So now I know what I'm dealing with. The first question says, what was the total distance traveled by the object on this graph? So if you follow your line, you'll see the highest and furthest distance traveled was on this line right here. And that would be 160 meters. Make sure you add your units. And don't just tell me 160. You have to add your units and be specific. So it traveled 160 meters. During which time interval did the object have the fastest speed? Well, you can take your time and calculate it and do distance divided by time. So on the first segment, we have that it went 10 meters divided by two seconds. That would be five meters per second. Right here, it went, it took two seconds to go 10 meters. So that's the same exact speed as the first segment. Here, it went 10, 20, 30 meters in two seconds. So 30 divided by two, that's 15, it got faster. But here you can clearly see how steep this line is and how much distance it gained. This is obviously the area where we're going to see that it has the fastest speed. So the time interval that that happened was between six and eight seconds. So let's put that as our answer, six to eight seconds. The next question says, what did the object do between eight and 10 seconds? Eight and 10, we see this horizontal line. We know on a distance time graph that if we see a flat line like this, we know it means that it did not move. It didn't go anywhere. And you can, you can tell that because at eight seconds, it was at 160 meters, but then nine seconds is still at the 160 meter mark. 10 seconds, still at the 160 meter mark, which means it stopped. It hasn't gone further. So it is stationary, it is stopped. The object is at rest. So I'm just going to say stopped. Now we have to look at this statement and see if it's true or false. The object on the graph traveled at a moderate speed for four seconds. Okay, I'd say that's pretty accurate, pretty moderate speed. Then it slightly increased its speed for two seconds. Yep, I can see my slope got a little higher. And then it traveled extremely fast for two seconds. Yes, got a very steep slope there, 
and finally came to a stop for two seconds. Yes, so that is accurate. That is correct. That completely describes my graph here. So I'm going to click true. All right. Now, motion graph two. This time you'll notice it's changed on us. This is a speed versus time graph. So instead of seeing distance over here, we now have the speed of the object over here. And then we have time down here. So your time is in hours, your speed is in miles per hour. So number five says, at what time on the graph was the object stopped or not moving? So this no longer, this horizontal line no longer means that it stopped. This is now a speed versus time graph. So now this means that as five hours went by, another five hours went by, that the object was traveling at 60 miles per hour that whole time. So that's like having your car on cruise control. That's a constant speed on a speed versus time graph. So you'll need to write for number five, constant speed. All right, and then for number six, it says during which time interval did the object travel at the fastest speed? Well, we have to figure out once again, looking on the side at your y-axis, find the highest number that the object went to. So the fastest it got to was 60 miles per hour, and that happened between 5 and 15 hours. So that is the time interval the object went the fastest. So I'm going to type 5 to 15 hours. Next it says, what did the object do between 15 and 25? hours. So 15 through 25 hours, it looks like it was going 60 miles per hour, but then it went down to so 25 miles per hour, then it went down more, and it's at zero miles per hour. So the object slowed down. So for number seven, you will write slowed down. Okay. And then true or false, the object on the graph traveled at a constant speed um, for five hours no this doesn't show me a constant speed this shows me a constant speed up here traveling 60 miles per hour for a couple of hours this shows me the speed is actually changing and it's not constant it's changing at different intervals this is a constant speed so i automatically know that this statement is false okay so this is what you should have for this one And I totally didn't even write the correct answer for number five. I mean, I was talking about how this horizontal line right here represented constant speed, but that's not what our question asks us. Five asks us at what time was the object stopped or not moving? So instead of saying constant speed here, I was trying to make a point that this no longer means stopped or not moving. Um, so actually the question saying at what time was the object stopped or not moving, that would be when it's down here all this where the lines are on the graph it's having a speed speed in miles per hour it's either at 5 10 15 20 so on and so forth the only time that it does not move is when it's down here at zero miles per hour so that would be at point zero and point 25 so let me get rid of that and write point zero and 25 i got ahead of myself explaining that one so there you go the last one is a position time graph. So we have hours down here, and then we have position on the y-axis. It says, how far did the object end up from the starting location? So it ended up all the way up here at 50 kilometers. So for number nine, you'll write 50 kilometers. And then number 10 says, is acceleration, constant speed, or no motion represented between 0 and 2 hours? So here's 0 and 2 hours. We know a diagonal not line when we're dealing with your, our position or distance in time. It represents a constant speed. So number 10 represents constant speed. And then 11 says, what did the object do? between three and four hours. Well, if you look, it was stopped for an hour, but then it went back to its starting point. So between three and four hours, it went back to its starting point. All right. 
and then true or false, the object on the graph moves at a constant speed of 10 kilometers per hour for two hours. So first hour went 10, second hour went 10. So that's true so far. Came to a stop for an hour, that's true. Um, and finally continued to move away from the starting location. No, it did not. It went back to the starting location and then moved away. So that is false. Okay, so this is what you should have for the third motion graph. Now it's time for you guys to do it on your own. Okay, so the next part is practice on your own. Um, you'll see that there are 10 maybe? Nope, 12. There are 12 questions here with different graphs that you have to work with. Um, the majority of them are distance time graphs, so that makes it easier. So you just have to answer the one question for each graph that's on the slide. So for example, this one says, what's the total distance the truck traveled? Well, it looks like it traveled five kilometers. So the total distance that it traveled, the furthest it got, was five kilometers. Okay, so your answer, you type right here, five kilometers. And then you guys do the rest on your own. If you're having issues, let us know. We can help you out.